Well, hello, hello. Here we go again. So, junk journal, July number 12. Now, number 12 was gratitude, or is gratitude. And I had to think long and hard about this because I know many things that I'm grateful for. Um, but putting it into an art form, I had to think. So, what have I come up with? Mindful that we had a recent subscriber comment that they would be delighted to see longer videos from me. Let's pop that up there because I've got these I'd like to share first. So, <clears throat> these are the Louisa Heinzel photographs that I've shown a few times now. Um, because I'm making a shelf, I'm making a bookshelf, and I would like a photo on my bookshelf. These are frames from 49 Dragonflies. This is a freebie on her Kofi site, and I'm going to use one of these, probably this one, but we'll see. It might have to be that one anyway, to frame my photograph. And on our shelf, we're also going to have a nice vintage style clock. This is a page from a Tim Holtz paper pad. This is a different paper pad, but I thought I would use these lines to make my shelf. And here are the books that are going to go on my shelf. Now these I had in my computer. I'm sorry, I've got no idea where they came from. But these ones I've made myself. Now, I would love to share this with you in my Kofi, but I know that's mine because that's my uh, rose dyed coffee pages, but I don't know where these four came from, so I don't share them because of copyright issues, but it was really simple. All I did was I put an image that I had stored on my computer into my design package and I just, it sort of came as a square and I just shrunk it in to get the right size. And then I just typed on top of it. It was really, really simple. Okay. So let's get started. Now I'm going to have to move my lemonade. Another swell chair here today. So I've got some lemonade on my desk. Let's move that out of the way. Okay. So this is our page. We've got a nice big one today. And what I'm thinking is... I'd like my shelf to have some depth. So I'm going to cut probably on that second black line to give me a deep shelf. And then the rest of it will be the top. So we're going to need to cut it at an angle, if any of that makes sense. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to find my scalpel blade, which I don't quite know what I did with it because I used it last night, don't tell me off, to cut um, to cut some chocolate in half because I was busy doing something and I didn't want to get up and find a knife so I just used the scalpel blade. It's probably still got some chocolate on it. Anyway, so taking a metal ruler, I'm going to use the one, two, three stripes as the depth. So I am going to cut along there against my ruler, like so. So that's the depth of my shelf, if you can imagine it. It's the down as you look straight on it. And then this is going to be the top. But obviously, I can't do three dimension like that in my book. So what I'm going to do in order to make that work, because they've both got to lie flat, is I'm going to do a return there and then put the things on here. Yeah, this is where my um, design days come into being, my architectural drawing days, because it makes sense, if that makes sense. So it makes sense if that makes sense. Goodness me, I'm good, aren't I? until I didn't study English <laughs> so I get rid of that rough edge first of all like so now 
if you've got a mat, it's really easy. You don't need to know anything. Just put it on your mat. You will have a diagonal line somewhere. Oops. And then you can line it up. Like so. Put your ruler on your line. Now that means I can't really see where I'm cutting. Fortunately, I've got another one over here. So, I know I'm probably off camera, but all I'm doing is cutting up the line that's further along the board so that I can see my blade and I'm less likely to take my finger off. Just like that. Okay. just trying to decide actually if I want it that side or that I think I want it in that side so that's our down drop like that and that's our shelf going backwards if that makes sense so what we'll do now is we will check yeah oh look at that it's exactly the right height so I'm just gonna put it there and then that is obviously my down side there, like that. Does that make sense? And then we're going to use the depth of this to put things on. But obviously, I mean, you don't just have a shelf hanging loose. So this is where I think maybe it's an idea to use some patterned paper as some wallpaper. So any pattern paper you've got that you fancy, I might use this. I mean, this is actually cardstock. It's a bit too robust, probably. I want a paper that's printed like that, if I can find a one. And of course, easier said than done. Should have thought about it before I came to film. Um, hmm. Right, now, oh, I don't know, I'm going to put you on poles and I'm going to find a background paper, bingo, found some wallpaper, <laughs> it's actually a digi print but that is going to work a treat, so what we're going to do is obviously tear off all of our whites, and this is good because this came out of my scrap drawer so we are able to use something from the drawer okay so that's got rid of that one we'll take this long one off this side so I haven't asked sorry how are you all today Is he crafting away, are you? Or are you watching this later in the day because you've been working? Or maybe because it's nice weather, you've been out with a family, who knows? So, this is going to be my wallpaper. This is what's decorating this room. Now, I knew it was going to be slightly short. Um, because of cutting off the white edge so we're going to set it in a little bit so that it doesn't look odd it looks deliberate and then we'll take our ruler and we will give ourselves a space at this end as well before we tear there we go so first job is let's glue this up so it's paper to paper I'm just going to use glue stick and because I'm covering the whole thing I'm actually going to glue on the page if that makes sense because we're gluing onto here anyway what difference does it make Now 
that's because I've been a good girl and I've been out in the kitchen this morning and I have washed my dirty mats, my sticky mats, my messy mats, whatever you want to call them. So, consequently, um, they're on the draining board, drying, which is why, right, I need to see where I'm going. You can tell this is a typical super straight flare for that. Anyway, it's stuck down. And look at that, we seem to still be in a green mode. It's weird, isn't it? Just how the brain works, I think. I should probably be bored of green by the time we get into tomorrow. Right. Now, if I had one, it might be nice to use one of those right windows. But I haven't got one, so I can't. So there's no window in this uh, wall of the room whatever room it is now i do need to cut a bit of this off i noticed so i'm not gluing all of it just most of it and i am thinking now that actually there's so little definition between the shelf Let's find my scissors and trim that off before it sticks. Between the shelf and the downstand, that I might actually like. You see, I can't cut straight to save my life. That's a bit better. Right. Um, there's so little difference between the shelf and the downstand that it also almost looks like um, just the same thing. So I'm wondering now if I'll turn the downstand over and we'll have the decorative drop and it just makes it look more obvious to my eyes. So we'll now crookedly cut that bit off was always going to be crooked wasn't it right let's just check the length again make sure that tip is oh it is stuck down i didn't think it was stuck down right line that oh that's pretty good could take maybe a tiny tiny sliver do i know how to do a tiny sliver Yeah, obviously not, because look, now it's too short. Oh no, that'll do. Right, okay, so, I've turned it over now, I've changed my mind. I feel like it's going to be more obvious this way round. So, line it up, glue it down, and now, we have visually got three dimension can you see that just because we cut that angle that's all it is if you wanted a true perspective you'd cut that one as well and that would be say a corner shelf you see but no this is a long one okay so now we need to work out the things we want to put on our shelf so we definitely want one of these vintage style clocks but we need Actually, they're all standing up, aren't they? I'm thinking this one is the one that's calling to me from the page. So I'm going to take this one out. Like that. And we can set that to one side. And I've now got to work out how to fussy cut it. I'm not a great fussy cutter. I don't particularly enjoy it. I don't feel I'm particularly good at it. So fussy cutting 
is something I do only when I have to, if I'm honest. I know there are people that absolutely love it and find it therapeutic. I'm not one of them. <laughs> okay, there's our clock. Now, because obviously our shelf has got depth, we can stand things further back on our shelf. They don't have to be on the front and they definitely don't want to be on this bit because otherwise they'd be falling on the floor. Yeah? So probably somewhere like that or maybe up a little bit further. But for the moment, I'm just going to leave it. Oh, I've just dropped it now. I'm just going to leave it floating. Now we need one of our photo frame. Now I'm going to cut the pitch. Oh, no, I'm not. Let's cut the frame out first. Gold? Gold or wood? Gold, I think. Or is it bright gold and dull gold? I don't know. I don't think any of the others have got a small enough aperture for the pictures that I want to use. That's why I'm choosing this one. Not because I particularly want to use this one, if I'm honest. So, we'll fussy cut this one. If you've seen the video where... Oh my goodness, I can't think of the lady's name. So I'm going to call her 49 Dragonflies probably come to me in a minute but if you've seen her video where she uses these um, the one that I particularly like is this one where she did the frame on page one and cut out so that it was looking onto page two it's lovely I did do a similar thing a few years ago uh, when we were doing the um, 52 weeks of Germany and we did a a page or two every week um, and we peered through those of you that have been around a while we peered through to Tim Holtz paper dolls um, sitting on the shelf but yeah it's another thing you can do with a frame it's very effective right here we go sorry about my head I oh, didn't know when you cry enough, did I? Still didn't go far enough, never mind. I'll work that out in a minute. <coughs> so obviously cutting out the frame. You could obviously um, not cut out the centre. You could just put the picture on the top. There's no reason not to. But, and I mean, there is no real depth to paper. So there's no argument of, well, the picture sits behind and you haven't got the depth if you put the picture on the front. Because whilst that is 100% true, there's no real depth to this paper, is there? I mean less than I don't know point 0.1 of a mil or whatever it is I don't know tiny tiny anyway right picture frame and now I can lay oh look at the little boy with his teddy now that definitely looks like someone's grandson that's the picture definitely I'm not even oh, I'll say I'm not no I'm not looking any of the others were in that one so, oops, so I'm going to trim this out. Now this is not a freebie, this is a paid for kit. Um, just so you know, because I'm always talking about freebies. Um, and this is, as I say, by Louisa Heinzel. Right, so we're going to stick this on there, like that. Oops, so I'm going to glue the sides obviously I'm not doing it completely because this is only to hold the picture in place and we are going for is that round and straight? yeah I think so ok now you can obviously just cut off
get this into place. And now we have a picture, which is also going to go on our shelf. Okay. Now I've got a little bit of white there from the frame, so I will run a little bit of ink around it just to lose that. But again, you see, that will sit on our shelf. So we've got our photograph, and we've got our clock. Now we need our books. Whoops, I can't pick that bit of paper up. So, what I'm going to do here, a nice easy one here, is line that on there on them and do the one cut all the way down. I've got two spares there. Okay. So um I think I'm gonna do a mixed arrangement show you what I mean. Uh, I'm going to have some standing up and some laying down. Oops. But I'm not picking that bit of paper up apparently. And then what I'm going to do is um, decide where the other things go. So the books will get stuck down. Oh. That wasn't very clever, was it? Oh well. The books will get stuck down first. And then um, the extras. Okay. So. I'm going to cut them all as rectangles and then we'll make the adjustments because if they're going to stand on an angle they're going to need a slice off the bottom so that they can actually sit on the shelf correctly rather than weirdly. Again I'll show you what I mean. Right so there's three And I'm obviously mixing my book spines in with those ones that I had from wherever. So I've got five of my own and six of those ones. I'm guessing they were probably in a kit somewhere or it was somebody's free download. I don't know, I'm sorry. Uh, but I'm sure if you want something like that and you search, book spine digitals or book spine kit or whatever you'll find if not that one then something very similar right it's nearly lunch time here i can feel my belly starting to rumble a very early breakfast today so my stomach thinks that it's gone past lunchtime, if that makes sense. I've actually got an extra bit of white that needs to come off there. Okay, so that's them, and then we'll just pull these ones out. And of course, generally, although not always, as you just saw, it's easier to get a straight line with a knife than it is. So you don't cut your finger off because hubby's out. <laughs> you can't shout for help. I think we'll do 
little bit of inking so that these age spots on these ones um, go brown rather than the white that they are. You may even see, have seen this kit, in which case you may like to comment for other people that are trying to find it. See, that wasn't very straight, was it? So you've got a nice array of background noises today. The fans going, which you can probably hear fluttering in the background. I don't think you can see it, but that's why the book pages are flapping backwards and forwards next to me. And you've got Boo snoring. She's um, on her last day of medication today from her infection where she cut the side of her face. I've got to be honest and say I'm not convinced it's a hundred oh it's a hundred percent healed though. Um, we might end up going back for round two I'm not sure yet we'll see right so we've got all these lovely little book spines don't mix the clock and the boy up with the rubbish clear that would be very silly I'm just trying to find an ink brush here and archival oh dear and a piece of rubbish paper I'm just gonna literally ink round all of these just a little bit just to make sure that we lose the white so yeah I mean the eye sorry I'm back on bow now um, the eye is still a bit wonky and the actual wound is still leaching something because her fur is still wet and matted so I don't know I tell you pets they're as much worry as children are in fact I sometimes think more so because the thing is, you know, children can talk to you, they can say their tummy hurts or whatever. Whereas dogs can't talk to you, you know, so you've got to try and second guess them. I mean, they do talk to you in their own way, but if you're not, you know, paying attention, you can, you can miss it. And she's been very cuddly lately, so she's obviously feeling a little bit sorry for herself. At the moment, she's snoring. I'm surprised, as I say, because it's lunchtime, really. How she's not right at my feet trying to get some food. But then I think that's an indication that she's not 100% as well. But there you go. But also, it's very hot. You know, and I don't know about you, but we're definitely eating less in the heat so why wouldn't she you know although she is mental she was out in the garden for sunbathing earlier she goes out there because she knows the concrete's cool to lay on um, but obviously the sun's then beating on her head <laughs> bit of circle okay enough of those woes and stupidity let's have a look here now so here's our bookshelf and here's all the things that we want to go on it so what i'm thinking is the first how far back are we going to go about oh well, we can't go that far back because we'll be on the off the page so we're going to go about there now if we're clever and we then move 
this could obviously be straight we can then move this one back a bit it looks like it's further back on the shelf yeah and then I think I'm gonna do one more that's a bit more forward so I'm gonna get those three there like that that's my oh, my first job so I'm gonna use this inky paper that I just used and I'm gonna glue up this first one and straight is the important bit and right at the front of the shelf like that okay I believe that's straight and then this that was one from the kit then this one of mine is going to sit by the back of it on our shelf again making sure nice and straight okay and then the red one whoops is either going to go back or forward not sure yet oh i always do that right um probably a little bit more forward like that so they're all on the shelf but they're staggered now this next one what i want to do i want to do this as leaning like that but the way we need to do that is to cut the bottom straight on that line or on an angle um, an angle on the shelf so I need a pencil so if we do that's where that line is and that is where that line is yeah so then if I take my scissors and I do that that diagonal line I know we've lost some and that's going to sit like that 